So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Business as Usual. It is Friday, March 12th, almost coming upon a one-year mark since uh, the first lockdown of COVID, but it is a beautiful day in Pittsburgh, sunny and almost 60, and we have an amazing guest today like we do each and every day. Today is no exception, and I'm pretty excited about you know digging into the conversation today with our guest that I will formally introduce in a moment. So let me just get some housekeeping out of the way, but important pieces. First of all, we have Jonathan Kirsting. He's here with us always. He's vice president of all things media and marketing and, uh, and storytelling. So if you have stories, if you have things that you think we should be talking about, just you know, lean into Jonathan because we do everything from radio to podcasts to you name it. So Jonathan will be looking and making sure if there are questions, he's paying attention to that and uh, he will chime in to make sure that we have our guest, Dan, to uh, answer those questions. I wanna give a shout out to Huntington Bank for their longtime partnership with us. They have been very active in the tech community, very active in the small business community, as well as offering a wide array of services. They have been with us through many of our innovations, meaning many of our experiments, and uh, business as usual is definitely one of them. We, I think we had an idea that it would last for about a month, and then uh, here we are. And there's so many great stories to tell, so many incredible people to meet. And I would say it is the most fun that I tend to have in the course of just these intense times. 40 by 80, it's the longitude and latitude of Pittsburgh, a wholly owned subsidiary of the Pittsburgh Tech Council. You're gonna hear more about an apprenticeship programs and things that we're doing in workforce development very soon. And we also support entrepreneurs. It's our charitable organization. So let's get on with the show, right? So we have, we have Dan Lavallee. It's pretty funny because we know his dad and it took us a moment to go, wait a second. We know his dad, but he, Dan is the director of social impact for UPMC Health Plan. And we're gonna find out what that means. Who is Dan, the man? And, uh, <laughs> and uh, have a chance to just talk about what the work is that he's been doing and what that means to our community. So Dan, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Really excited to have you here. And we're gonna jump in and we're gonna say, okay, if you follow the series, you know that the way I kick it off is really trying to find out a little bit about you. Let our guests learn a little bit about who Dan is. What is, you know, a little bit about your professional journey, maybe some of the things that you might be most proud of and how did you land into what you're doing now? Beautiful. Well, thank you for having me, Audrey and everybody. I promised Brooks I would do some sort of dance routine at the very end, but you know, we might not, might not get okay. there, you know, so that can be, you know, for another day, but no, you know, we can do it. So you all, you all having us on a Friday and especially as we have, you know, more and more warm weather and, and, you know, better and better news here and across our country. So, you know, for for me, you know, and, and I've had a I've had an interesting journey, Audrey, and, and a lot of you know my my father and you know and, and our family and, and what's kind of gone on in our life. But a lot of you know I've uh, Western Pennsylvania, born and bred. You know, found my way uh, to D.C. for a little bit during the recession, and then came back here to uh, my my dad take care of his uh, grandmother with my my wife at the, at the time, and um, you know she had run a Kunz Bakery in Pittsburgh. A lot of you probably had been there at some point in life. It was on Oak Pitts campus, and you know, so that that's our family in a nutshell. And, you know, for me, um, you know, my life in, in a lot of ways was, was, you know, shaped by loss, but then opportunity. Um, you know, as we, we came back here, I, um, you know, decided it was, it was, you know, after working a little bit in healthcare, I wanted to, to try to make a difference, you know, in the public service, decided to run for Congress in 2014, which was a wild experience. I didn't know anything about it, but I thought it was time for younger generation to step up a little bit and at least be a part of it. I didn't want to complain, Audrey, without trying to do something hey. about it. Um, mm -hmm. had a fun journey, um, ended up coming, coming short, coming up well short in the general election. So that was certainly a down, but so many people gave me a, a chance and a shot in our family, um, you know, that uh, it kind of, you know, made me look a little bit where I wanted to go. And, you know, so I, I, I joined UPMC Health Plan a little bit after that election because I wanted to work, quite frankly, for um, a group of people. I didn't really care what I did at the time, but people I trusted and loved and admired and Mm -hmm. um, so I made my way there, uh, you know, a little bit after that election. I've been there about six years now, and I serve on a new team that we we started about a year ago, right before the pandemic, um, and we call the Center for Social Impact. So look, we know that that our members in the community, you can't be worried about going to the doctor or 
you know, or taking your meds if you don't know where you're going to stay at night, if you don't have a job that, you know, provides um, the foundation for your family or where you're going to find food the next meal. So, you know, for us, it's all about how do we partner with the community to develop direct programs that, that do this. And, you know, one I'll go into, you know, in a little bit is our Pathways to Work program, which is a new one that we started during the pandemic after we, you know, saw one in three Pennsylvania workers lose their or file a jobless claim. And as you all know, and have been talking about jobs aren't fully coming back, but it was time for us as the largest employer in the state to step up and make some meaningful difference and, and change. And so we started a small little team of recruiters that we call dream makers that are here for people in the community to talk with, help them navigate and find jobs at, at UPMC or elsewhere or trainings, which we'll go into. Um, so there were two big um, things that we kind of heard in the community is that we needed to help people navigate and find the job better and that we needed to develop more skills-based training programs, which I know is the focus of the council and many of you on the, on the call today around how do we train and how do we develop apprenticeships. Uh, so that's what we've tried to do in the past six to nine months uh, with a program that we call Freedom House that I can dive into in a minute. Yeah. It's, it's honestly all about that service and what we can do to, to help the community. So it's been great. So I just want to point out, if you've seen, he has nail polish on and uh, hit, you know, do you want to say anything about you know, I'm happy to. I didn't get a, a, a re I should have asked my daughter to help me today. You know, she she is a, an expert nail painter and, you know, <laughs> got to make these Zoom and Teams calls fun. And I, like my father, talk with my hands way too much. Dana from our team knows. I think I talk with my hands every time. So, you know, we try to keep it fun, Andre, you know. So. It's great. I love it. I love it. So I'm, I actually am looking forward to doing a deep dive on Freedom House and sure. you know, let, talk about it. Talk about, you know, you work on Freedom House too. Give, it, give us like the social impact. Let's wheel back and give us the social impact framework for the- Absolutely. The so for us in terms of the social impact framework and how it clicks into to Freedom House is, you know, it's our vision to be the national leader as a health plan and as a system in terms of developing social interventions that work that help the community and that help individuals have better health care and quality of life. So for us, it went straight into jobs during the pandemic. Um, so some of you might know um, in the 1960s, there was a Freedom House program uh, that was started by Presby Hospital at the time, Pitt and, and others up in the Hill District. The whole goal was really around um, how do we better serve the community? There was no emergency service program at the time. Um, as our, our uh, community services vice president always articulates in the vision that he had and so many others at UPMC was to, to th look into that history in so many ways, which created what we know as the EMS services today and was all done through training individuals who were unemployed. The vast majority were from minority communities and backgrounds up in the Hill District and others to be that, that workforce, to go out and serve communities that honestly were never getting that type of service um, at the time. So it lasted about seven, eight years as a job training. And then it really was the bed country for how EMS services was provided. And now it's no secret. And I know you all have talked about this and many on the phone work in this now. There's a dire need for social impact and social determinant support, whether it be food, employment, housing in our communities. And there's a chance that we can, as UPMC and others, provide this service in the community but that workforce isn't always there. So that's why we re-upped uh, Freedom House 2.0 with the legacy and the focus on this is a job training program for individuals, especially on Medicaid or cash assistance who want to work. I think that's the misnomer. People want to work. That's what we hear. And we needed to give an avenue to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. So we were fortunate, Audrey, to partner with Partner for Work, uh, Father Paul Abernathy and the Neighborhood Resilience Project to host um, a, a class. We have two classes scheduled of, of 10 each. We have our first graduation here um, next week and oh, nice. our cohort in March, and we're going to do three more uh, through the end of the year. Uh, so the focus here is the exact same type of training, but then with a little bit more trauma-informed approach and a little bit more of how can we leverage paramedics and community health workers to do more in the homes and in the community. So we're the courageous and just brave nature of these students who've gone through is just amazing in their personal story. So that's why we did it. That's the frame. And, you know, we've, we've paid them in this training, you know, through Partner for Work and tried to give as much mentorship and support as we can, which I know is the vision that you all have for where you're headed as a council for IT related and other jobs. So it's, it's exciting. We, we're, we're learning right with you. And so is Freedom House like a location? Is it a physical location? And how did you adapt during COVID? 
Sure, it's a great question. So it is not an actual physical location. It's okay. based off of what was called Freedom House Ambulance. And now what we did was we're, we, it, the training that we are doing is with Father Paul up at the Neighborhood Resilience Project up in the Hill District. We're going to have one more cohort in the Hill, given the history and so much support that's needed, and then take it on the road. So there will be different homes for Freedom House because that's our goal. The Keysport will likely be next. Uh, looking at a handful of other communities where we have a presence and have a need. Um, and during COVID, Audrey, what we, we did is, you know, we had plans, of course, it, this started in January when things were still quite difficult. We had an ability to do some of the trainings, you know, via devices at home. But what we were able to do with the enough space that we had was have all the precautions in place, dividers up for the training, um, ensure that we had people that were you know, all the precautions that we take within our hospitals, we did there as well. And that's what our vision is to continue to. We value the in-person learning as much as possible. But again, we're very strict with social distancing guidelines, cleaning and masking uh, that we were, you know, able to do. So it was exciting to, to do it. Hopefully warmer weathers will help us to continue to do it in person. And so what, do they actually have an ambulance? Is there, is there an ambulance like tied to this? Can you talk a little bit about, about that? Sure. So, so there is, and you know, it's, it's, you know, what, what we've tried to do is, um, is leverage that work. So not all the, the ones who come out of this Freedom House cohort will go to work immediately as EMTs. A lot want to be nurses and some will be community health workers, which is a bit different, but the city and the mayor and, and the EMS chief and others did actually, we were able to see, we had the CBS art news uh, crew that came a couple of weeks ago, but we had the new ambulance that all the new ambulances in the city, or at least most, I believe, have this Freedom House uh, ambulance uh, emblem on it, which is beautiful. And I just admire the you know, mayor and the city and for, for, for really honoring that because in, in showing that the impact that was had, and it says 1968, 1975. So it made it very real and makes it real for the students and others yeah. to come to show that here's the legacy. We actually have a couple of the founders who've partake, um, you know, partaken in the classes and are there with them. It's, it's a great piece. We have mentors and um, you know, I see some of the questions that chat around volunteers and others. Yeah, how do they volunteer? How do they volunteer? Yeah, so we, we actually, the, the thing that we need now are mentors. So, you know, people who have out, like, we, you know, we like to keep it some inside UPMC, but others elsewhere um, who would like to be. So we will get that information to, to you all. Is, that, the yeah. is, it, flag. is there a link or anything that you want us to put in there? You know, no, no link at the current moment, but a flyer that I'll get to you guys if we that that it really has a QR code and then an email that will, okay. you know, the easiest place to get to an application for it. So we're kind of running it through the Dreammakers team that we have. So we yeah. connect it all together. Right. So do you want to talk about the Dreammakers now since you sure the entree to that? What you know, what is this team of people that you're calling the Dreammakers? Yeah. So, you know, I had heard this from from many people in the community, Richard Garland and others, that you know, people. Um, when trying to find a job at UPMC, it's just hard. I mean, we have thousands open at any time. There's, you know, thousands of people who apply, you know, and especially during the pandemic when so many people had types of skills and that honestly were great fits for us. We are not only nurses and doctors. We, in fact, we have thousands of positions in customer service and other roles that people really don't realize are, are that, you know, they have the experience for. But Audrey, what time and time again, you know, we got to a point where people didn't feel like they had the right connection to us. So that's why we launched this team of, of recruiters. And you know, they're all young and new in their careers as well. And they want to make a difference in what they're there for. So they're not held to the same. They don't have to you know, fill 100 nursing support positions in a week. What they're there for is to talk with anybody. It doesn't matter if you're working on your GED and you're not sure where your career is going to go, or if you have a PhD and you lost your job during the pandemic. We're here to make that difference and make that change and to provide hope and compassion. It's not a guarantee of a job. But what it is, is a guarantee of an advocate for you to help find a place in UPMC. We've been hiring about 40 people off of Medicaid or cash assistance a month, and we look to continue to build that up. We're working with about 100 or so individuals at any given time, and we get dozens of new inquiries a, a day and, and even more a week. So it's, it's exciting. And you know, we're just trying to make it easier and make it so somebody has someone to talk to, especially people who are, their unemployment might be running out, or they're just so scared. You know, this is uh, we want to provide that that kind of hope and support through action, though, and through through solutions and guidance. And so the dream makers actually, this is this is part of their job. This is their job, or the, that is their job. Here. Yes. So that, that, I will no, have their job. I will there have a business employees. card. I'm a dream maker. You know, we're working on that. That term was 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 coined by Jason Walkowski, one of our our uh, our town acquisition uh, leads at the at the health plan, and and I love it. We. 
um, you know, I, they, they have the stories that they articulate. I mean, you know, we were talking with, with one of our, our new hires from, from last year, you know, as she, as she'd been working retail, was afraid she was going to lose her job um, and was eight months pregnant and, you know, was scared and, you know, wanted to take, you know, as, her little maternity leave that she was going to potentially get to try to find a way into UPMC and she didn't know how to go. And our team was able to step in and help her and help her see that she could come find a job with us you know, that, and now what she's doing is, is calling our, our members who have uh, diabetes and chronic conditions to make sure they're taking their meds during the pandemic. I mean, what more? That's a dream. That's a dream for us. That makes us a better company, a better health plan. You know, so that's for us. And that's what the dream makers do. And so you know, how many people are dream makers? Give us a sense of, of this. And are, are there any job openings for dream makers? You know, we've got five. We have five right now. You know, we fluctuate on the team. And a lot of them, the beautiful thing for them is that this might be the entry into their career at UPMC. Right. They will then go into other places themselves. So we 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 constantly have, you know, openings in our, our HR department as well. Not as many as we do in our um, patient care or, or customer service. But, you know, for people that are passionate and want to serve and want to make this difference, please put them, put them in touch. And, and anybody, you know, I'll put my contact information. You could call me anytime. That's the bedrock of this program. Where I'm actually heading in a little bit is out to, uh, Homewood to, to meet with uh, Rashad Birdsong and others around how we can ensure that we're getting in the community to show that we're here. This right. is just, you know, something, you know, up, up in the air. This is this is us coming here to, to try to make a change and make the program better. We don't have all the answers. I certainly don't. So it's, it's all about trying to take one step. Right. And running some experiments, which is really cool. So what what about this class, this cohort? Is this cohort, will we learn about this cohort? Are there ways that People can just learn about the 10 week program or, you know, however long the program is and the cohort so that we as a community can rally around, you know, their experience and their graduation. Absolutely. So our events uh, you know, up in the hill next uh, next Friday. Unfortunately, we've got to keep it a little tight given social distancing uh, and COVID. Good. But what we'll be doing after the graduation is sharing a little bit more about you know, about the, the group and, and who they are and where they're headed within UPMC, especially because we want to show that this can happen and be replicated and scaled across the, 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 uh, the state for us and, and for others, because it gives hope. So yes, we will share um, all that we possibly can. We'll hopefully have a couple little videos that we'll have soon to talk about it. We've had some neat mm. coverage, which has been wonderful to dramatize the need. And again, you know, Audrey, this is, you know, something that we see can be replicated even into other job areas, you know, job, IT, you know, and it's some of the curriculum is mm -hmm. so, it's universal in some ways in terms of taking trauma-informed care and other supports. You know, we, some of the stories from the individuals that are in this cohort and then the classes to be, they're unbelievable, brave. So many have lost loved ones like I have in my life, you know, and, and it just, they, their, their ability to respond to adversity. And honestly, the other thing that's cool, I didn't mention before, this, this, so it's a 10 week training all every Monday through Friday, all day. And, and at the end of this, they take a national EMT certification. That is a brutally difficult, I yeah. mean, it's insane. And usually it takes people right. six to nine months. So it's, yeah. it's, uh, they've done this, you know, while juggling many things and supporting the community. So they're, they're brave and we'll show you we can soon. So Jonathan Shree has a question that, that I missed. Do you see it as? Okay, I'll I'll do it. Is social impact tied to SDOH initiatives? Yes, we just call it social impact over it all. And it's a great, great question. So what we kind of think about it, two things. So social needs and social determinants, we think a little bit differently. So if you think like an example, so a social need that we would see would be a, a health plan member of ours who has an immediate transportation need that they need to get to their doctor's visit. And how do we ensure that we're taking care of that immediate need for our member. And then we think of social determinants is how do we as a company and as a region take part in helping to about the larger transit and transportation, you know, issues that we have and how do we highlight the individual needs and make that into a larger um, discussion. So what, you know, our on workforce, you know, for us, how do we ensure that our members are getting employed and trained where they want to be now, but then how do we work with, you know, partner for work and just a wonderful group that they have there and others to think about how do we play a role as a health plan, as a system and other same bucket to wrap our arms around um, people who are coming through these trainings and do as much as we can and all come to the table, all meet in the community, go to people's tables and make this work. So 
that's how we think of social needs and, and social determinants a little little differently. But we decided to call it social impact because we look to try to, to, to play so, a small role in all those. So here's a follow up, though. Is this program bigger than just to help those in the health plan? Yes, it is. So for Pathways to Work, as, as one example, that is not only for our health plan members. We make that available to anybody. So look, we have an email account, pathways to work at upmc.edu, that we encourage anybody to share to share out into the community. We'll send a, you know, a flyer that can be shared out, Audrey, to the group um, afterwards as well. It's it talks about what the program is and, and what we give. You know, so for us, we have other programs as well. We have some that are member specific because some of it is we can do a little bit more mm -hmm. you know, for our members in particular, some of our underserved communities, individuals with intellectual disabilities who are our members. We can do a little bit more knowing more about them. But, you know, on other issues such as housing, we have programs that support a member, but then we like to play a role as, as in, in terms of, you know, helping to, you know, build and build more pathways for affordable housing, you know, in, in the region and across the state. So it's, it's all together, and honestly, we're again, we're we're learning. This is we don't have all the answers. I, I really don't. So we're looking for you know anybody on here today. I would love to talk with any anywhere so that we can make a, a better difference and really hear from the community because that's that's the key here. Not, nothing without that. So like a lot of the so this trend is to make sure that businesses are getting really actively engaged in workforce development and getting deeper ties into the community. And other nations, you know, have this practice compared to us in the US. And we're sort of just, we're just beginning to get there, I think. What do you think? What do you think, you know, in terms of the business community and apprenticeships and, you know, intensive training and, and the role of that? Do you see us finally shifting to the point? I mean, we're working on apprenticeship um, programs as well. And I know that we're using your guidance to try to help us so what do you think? What, what are, you know, you, you've been in public policy, you're, you're sitting in a role where you have a different seat at the table. I mean, I, I think you hit it right on and the time is now, there's no greater of a time than right now. I mean, with the sustained job loss and the changing of industries, I mean, Audrey, I, I applaud what you guys are doing and thinking about apprenticeships because it is well-documented that pre-employment training, apprenticeships, and other support programs there will support our community to bring skills, a little bit of retraining and find jobs for today and tomorrow. We're at a time that we feel so incredibly, uh, you know, passionate about this at UPMC and within the health plan, because, you know, what we see is we don't want to duplicate anything either. We want, there is so much out there and so many partners, the workforce boards, other employment agencies that we support, whether it be the Manchester Bidwells, the EICs, the others that we've worked with for for years for trainings for our positions and then others in the community. It's, you know, I think what's made us think a little differently too has is seen the industries that have really had such difficulty and have lost jobs, but the individuals who worked in those with just a little bit of, of retraining or just a, just a very little bit, they can find a new unbelievably meaningful uh, partnership or in career with us or others. So I think it's time because there is a need and there is a chance to, to make that. There's so many avenues and we're hoping that Freedom House and the lessons learned that we would have is one, we have a new program thanks to, again, Partner for Work and, and Life Sciences Greenhouse around training concierges who will be answering the phones for people who need COVID vaccines and others right now. Um, you know, that's, the, we see this as the, as the time. And even if we work through some issues mm -hmm. and changes, it's, it's a chance to, to bring us all together because that's what we've heard. So Audrey, I, I think we will get there. We are getting there together as a region. And you know I'm confident we'll move our region and our state and country forward with these types of partnerships. And we'll learn from each other because we're just vulnerable, I think, about what we don't know and about what we need to, to, to be together. Right. We'll trust with each other. We'll, we'll get there. I, I, I promise. I know. So Jonathan, grab Mark, uh, Mark Freeman's Absolutely, Dan. You definitely have your father's passion and energy, and we love that man. He's done such great work, and we I love seeing that continue. So, um, Mark Freeman wants to know: um, Is the uh, UPMC Dreammakers Initiative related to all the work of Pittsburgh Gateways, and also is UPMC Dreammakers Initiative related to all the Pittsburgh Gateways Dreammakers activities during the past ten plus years at the Energy Innovation Center as well, too? Absolutely. I don't even know if we honestly, you know, I would say this, probably, we, we might not even have our pathways to work, you know, recruiters and the, and the Dream Makers team now without a lot of the work that's been done at the EIC. So I'll tell you what's special about that is over the past year, we had 150 of our Medicaid members go through 
the, envi the EIC's Environmental Service Training, which is a partnership with EIC, and then our uh, UPMC leaders, uh, John Kralicki and Val and, and their team up at Presby and, and Shady Side, and um, the EVS roles that they have, the Environmental Service Worker roles, it works all together. We wouldn't have that without the wonderful training programs that Rich runs and others and several others around the that the city and the region, so they are connected because all we're trying to do is give people an avenue to either find a job that they could be qualified in a career they're interested in right now, and if not, refer them to a training program either that we run or a community partner runs. I mean, that's the dream. That's the dream right there because we want to meet people where they are. So yes, 100% Mark, it's a great question, um, and that's you know where, where we're headed, and we're hoping to you know, do more and replicate that work and support groups like the EIC, you know, out, out east and central PA and, you know, up north with our friends. So it's a, it's a great model and they've done amazing, amazing work. So what other initiatives? What's next? So I think replicating Freedom House is one that's next, building a handful of other pre-employment training programs, um, you know, in areas like Harrisburg and, and leveraging some amazing work that uh, the Bidwell Training Center's done with the replica organization up in Erie. Um, in Pittsburgh, what's next is continuing to go day by day into the community to make the Dream Makers team known. We got to keep getting the word out. We're nowhere near the type of, uh, of, of momentum that we could be. And I know we'll get there because of just getting the word out. So forums like this to me are great. And I would say lastly, working with you all and others around what job trainings and where, what, are we, what are we missing and how can we be a small part of of, of making that move. Um, and I would go, lastly, we're looking at some retention supports programs with Partner for Work, especially how do we, once we get people in, we did all this work to get a better foundation and build trust to get people in the door. How do we listen to the community and the people we've hired to ensure that they want to stay and they feel like they can grow in our, um, you know, in our community and our family. So to me, um, those are, the, that's, that's what's next. I mean, for me personally, I just want to get out there and, and make sure people, they can hold me responsible for this because this is so where can people, where how can at. people find you? How can people find you? You want to share? So I'll, I'll take it. I, go ahead, go ahead. You want your email or? You can yeah, put sure. It I'll, I'll put it in. Okay. I'll put it into everybody, email, cell phone. And, you know, honestly, it doesn't have to be just related to workforce. We have, we have an amazing team. Um, that, that, um, that I'm on as a part of social impact and, and you know, others across that we're, we're looking for partners and others. Okay. And it doesn't always have to result in something immediately, but it can be, you know, all of us kind of passionately going in the, in the right direction. I'm excited to hear about where you all are headed because what you're doing is okay. that that's the right path. And it's, it's just a, just the greatest thing. Okay. So you want to share that in the yep. chat. So do you think this guy has enough energy? And enough passion. I think, so. I think he does. Calm down. <laughs> I yeah. I think it, I think it's awesome. And you can find him also on LinkedIn. So Dan, it's Friday. It's the beginning of a long weekend. It's beautiful out. It's a year of COVID. What's the big thing that you've learned over this last year? Uh, I have learned um, to be incredibly grateful for what we have. My my wife and I have a five year old. We have a, another one on the way in May. And, you know, we have, uh, I think I've learned in this time, I was talking to a couple of people um, yesterday who had been out of work and, and were interested. You know, that um, to me is, is um, to, to never, never let that go and never, never leave that because so much of what we have, we're so great. We're so fortunate to have what we have and it's, it's time to continue to step up. So what I'll, I'll remember is it's, we're, there's a chance if we just join together and have a coherent vision as we move forward. Um, you know, ne never, never leave that be. It's always been something I've tried to appreciate in my life, you know, and, and some of the loss I had earlier on. And, but, uh, you know, it's, that's what I'll remember and take away from, from this time is that, you know, there's always hope and there's always a chance to, to do it as long as we just can get out of our comfort zones a, a little bit and, and do that together. So I'm, I'm grateful for, for you all. And hopefully we get to spend some more, more time outside. I'm, I'm pumped for that, especially. I know. And you are having a COVID baby. We are excited. I'm, you know, it's, it's ready. You know, I'm, I'm ready. I'm a girl dad now. So, you know, I, I'm down for, for, for another girl, but we're keeping it a surprise for fun. So it's a, it's a good journey. So we're, we're excited. My wife just started at K&L Gates, which is exciting. So they're wonderful. So we're, 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 lit, we're, we're, we're enjoying our, our, our time right now, which is, which is great. So. That's awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time with us. Love your enthusiasm. Love the leadership on this work. Love the partnership. Thank you for being so, uh, you know, candid and letting people have access to your cell phone and your email, et cetera. Mm -hmm.
And we will stay connected to you. We will be watching and supporting you as it makes sense and it will. So appreciate your time. And then Jonathan, you wanna talk about next week at all? Yeah, we're kicking off Monday strong. We have US Representative uh, GT Thompson stopping by to talk about things like education, access to healthcare and so forth. So it should be a really good conversation on Monday. That's great. So everyone have a fabulous weekend. Stay safe, wear your mask, but enjoy your time outside because spring is here. Thank you, Dan. Thanks for taking the time with us out of your really busy schedule. Thanks again. Yes. Take care, everyone.